natin. At alamin natin kung sino-sino po ang mga opisyales na ito na pinangalanan po na sangkot sa drug trade. Nakalulungkot kasi matataas po ang katungkulan ng mga opisyales po na ito. And eto na, malalaman na po natin. Such short notice. The Department of the Interior and Local Government and the National Police Commission called for this press conference to provide our media partners and the Filipino people with updates on the case of Master Sergeant Rodolfo Mayo Jr., who was arrested for possession of 990 kilograms of drugs in 2022. Constituting our panel for today's press fund, we have our DILG Secretary, Benjamin Benhur Abulos Jr., and NAPOLCOM Vice Chair and Executive Officer, Attorney Alberto A. Bernardo. Without further ado, may we call Secretary Benjamin Benhur Abulos for his opening statement. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Anong kumabilis ang itong uh, press conference natin ngayon. At uh, kasama ko ngayon dito sa Lamesa ang uh, ating Vice Chairman sa National Police Commission, si uh, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Bernardo, Alberto Bernardo. Ang kagabi niya ang ating Undersecretary for Peace and Order, si Oka Valenzuela. And of course, ang aking kano naman ang Undersecretary din ng DLG, si Lord Villarueva. Of course, ang ating Undersecretary din, si J.B. Yamas, at si Attorney Chito ng DILG. Kasama rin natin dito si uh, Yusef uh, Marge Puchelis at ilang pang mga abogado ng DILG. Uh, at ang spokesperson ng PNP, si Colonel Jean Pahamlo. <clears throat> Ito'y minikinalaman sa kaso 990 kilos na drugs na, na ito'y October nangyari. No? Gusto ko lang uh, sa kalagang mandato at at talagang uh, nakaporma ng ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos ay tinatawag na holistic approach sa ating kampanya laban sa illegal na droga. Dahil dito, tayo nag-focus sa panilinis ng rango ng kapulisan ng Philippine National Police sa pag-identify na alam natin kung sino-sino ang mga sangkot sa mga illegal na droga at ang pinutulis natin ang mga pusya. Ang kaka-importante ni Pertins ay over 990 kilos of shabu during an anti-illegal drug operation in Tondo, Manila. Those are the reports submitted by PTE. The police operation also led to the arrest of police master. And the leader of the Philippine National Police, I will not allow or create the Tinatawa that is special task force na inwala na. SIPG 990 to conduct investigation to the matter. Bilang like inyong Secretary ng Interior and Local Government and at the same time the ex-official chairperson of the National Police Commission exercising administrative and operational supervision over the PNP. It is incumbent upon us to monitor and look into the progress of the investigation. Meron pong tinatawag na National Police Commission. Ito ay nag-exercise at administrative and operational supervision sa PNP. So, kami ang magmamonito sa progreso ng kabilang investigasyon. Kung kaya, kung maalala ninyo, yung sinabi ko noong February 20, 2023, dahil nakakansin ko, parang matagal itong kaso nito, itong gumawa ako ng sulat address to General Asuril. Uh, sinasabi ko rito, Ano na ang resulta ng fact-finding na ginawa nito tungkol sa mga kaso? Number two, anong mga 
asong pinay ninyo sa mga 45 kilos at sa iba pa. At ano na nalagay sa illegal drugs. Dahil ako'y naniniwala, hindi lang si Mario Ipol dito, dapat marami pa. Ito yung February 2023. Considering the four months of already passed, I specifically requested the Chief PNP to update us the soonest possible time on the steps taken by the PNP to investigate and file charges against any police officials who may have induced, assisted, or collaborated with the, with the criminal activities of Mayo. This includes the results of the fact investigation conducted by the SIPG 919 and what charges or proceedings have been initiated against those found in there. Ano ka na sinabi ko, sa gantong kalaking bagay, imposibling si Mayo Lama. On March 23, during the impact of the COVID meeting, dito mismo sa lugar na ito, nagkaroon kami ng meeting ng National Police Commission, and dito yung mga ibang police officers tungkol dito sa Mayo case. General Eliseo de la Cruz, ang head ng Special Task Force 990 at before the members of the NBAC na ito rin sa Special Task Force 990 ay ginawa lamang para investigahan yung nawawalang 42 kilos ng shabot na ninakaw. Sabi ko nga, pero ba mas importante yung 42 kilos o yung 990 kilos? Dapat hindi ba na yung 42 kilos, mas mahalaga yung 992 kilos. Kaya nung hearing na yun, no, sabi ko, kurawa kayo ng chronology. On the part of the program, three meetings were held with the PLP to be apprised of updates on the aforementioned anti-illegal drug operation. However, the Philippine National Police leadership did not provide any conclusive information on the matter. Incidentally, these three meetings were conducted before the two chambers of Congress in the Philippines, held two separate hearings on March 7 and 8, respectively. Disappointed with the very slow progress of the investigation, I, in the exercise of my authority, as the ex-official chairperson of the Nepal Corp, in the letter addressed to Vice, uh, Vice Chair Alberto Bernardo, dated March 27, 2023, I authorized the conduct of a fact-finding inquiry on the involvement of Mario and other police officials in the seized 990 kilos. Gumawa ako ako dahil hindi na ako natutuwa sa nangyayaring pinay na kaso. Kaya noong March 27, gumawa kami ng fact-finding work na pinapangunahan ni Vice Chairperson Bernardo para investigahan na ito at lalong lawakan pa ito. Ang fact-finding ay marami na ang kinuha mga testimony ng mga testigo. Marami mga tapes. No? The fact-finding board has taken testimonies of several personalities and based on this and other pieces of evidence including tapes, mga iba-iba klaseng tapes, under the possession of the board it shows that there is indeed a massive attempt to cover up the arrest of Sergeant Mayo. Pinukulit ko, lumalabas sa mga testimony, no? sa mga salaysay, sa mga testigo, sa mga tapes, sa lahat ng ebidensya, sa ngayon pa lang na ikita natin na may malawakang pag-cover up sa nangyari nito. Hindi tayo papayag na magbago ito. Salo ang droga. Dapat malagot ang mga tao nito at seryoso 
ang pamahalaan dito, seryoso ang National Police Commission dito. At this point, may papakita mo na kasabi na sa inyo mga video. Isa lang ito sa iilang video, ito'y sinamarize na para may makakata ito para lang magunawaan ninyo ang mga nangyari. At this would collaborate other testimonial, testimonial evidence to put them out so first of the spy during the October 8, 2022 and the illegal operation in Diondo. At a glance, the video would show a different scenario as compared to the narration of facts as stated in the report submitted by the PNP. Parang iba ang nangyari doon sa mga report na final ng Philippine National Police. Kasama na ang mga dokumento na ka-attach sa kaso. At saka ang mga testimonyang binigay ng PNP officers during the congressional hearings in March 2023. Ano, ano yung mga nato nito at pagkatapos ito, may anunsyo ko rin o anong gagawin natin sa mga taong nakita natin dito. Dahil sigurado ko, once makikita nyo ito, magigigil kayo sa galit. Inuulit ko, lumalabas na iba ito sa official report na ginawa ng Philippine National Police. Nako, sino kaya ito? Merong sigurado may masisipa ngayon. Ano? Sino kaya? Abangan natin sa susunod na mga yugto, ano? Ano ko rin ko natin ang video? Sana makita natin. Ayan, so tutok po. In coherence to the factual sequence of events, regarding the 999 <laughs> kilograms of drugs to costed from police staff sergeant mail, and contrary to the reports presented and tendered by the PNP Drug Enforcement Group, on October 8, 2022, at 11.58 a.m., Police Master Staff Sergeant Mayo arrived in his SUV and parked in front of WPD landing in Tondo, Delta. At 12.39 noon, PMS Kimayo left the area, boarding his SUV. He was seen carrying a paper bag. At 1.16 p.m., Mr. Ney Adadero, the caretaker of the establishment, arrived in front of WPD landing establishment. At 1.20 p.m., a gray SUV arrived, together with a white sedan in front of WPD lending establishment. Early, PMSG Rodolfo Maggio was already caught by the operatives of PNP Drug Enforcement Group. At 1.21 p.m., Police Captain Sosonko of PNP Drug Enforcement Group, together with five others, disembarked the Gray Montero and White sedan in front of the same establishment. At 1.28 p.m., Patrolman Kalal was seen talking to Mr. Atandero, the caretaker, asking him to stay on the side for questioning in front of the establishment. At 1.31 p.m., Police Staff Master Sergeant Rikusora was seen entering the establishment. At 1.34 p.m., Police Captain Sosa... Oh, masyado kasing maliit yung video, ano, mga tol. Kaya hindi ko rin ma-zoom in. Kaya pagpaumanhin nyo po, pero ang pinapakita po dito sa atin yung chronology of events o yung pagkakasunod-sunod po ng mga pangyayari nung inaresto po ito pong si Sergeant Mayo ng October 2022. Patuloy po natin panoorin o pakinggan po ninyo ang sinasabi po dito ng narrator. 4 p.m. Police Captain Sosonko was seen entering the same establishment. At 1.39 p.m. Police Captain Sosonko was seen escorting that they handcuffed the MSG Mayo entering WPD landing. This was his first entry after being caught by PNP Drug Enforcement Group. At 1.43 p.m., the MSG Mayo was brought out of the establishment while Police Master Sergeant Kajirata, Police Senior Master Sergeant Reba Sora, and Police Captain Sosonko entered. 1.48 p.m., the MSG Kajirata opened the trunk of the sedan while a man wearing black t-shirt, carrying a medium-sized luggage, and putting the luggage inside the trunk of the car. At 1.50 p.m., PSMG Kadarato and the man wearing black t-shirt were seen carrying the stuff and put it at the back passenger seat of the set car. 1.52 p.m., a white man in a black sedan arrived near the WPD establishment. At 1.56 p.m., Mr. Ricardo was seen talking to PNP personnel in front of the establishment. At 1.59 p.m., 
still handcuffed, he and SG Mario were seen again entering the same establishment for the second time. Together with Patrol Nicola, Police Staff Sergeant Dumai, and Police Master Sergeant Nakamata. At 2.03 p.m., PMSG Mayo was brought back again in the gray SUV. At 2.08 p.m., PMSG Kachirata was seen boarding the red motorcycle and leaving the premises. 2.13 p.m., PMSG Kachirata was seen carrying a small luggage, boarding the red motorcycle, together with PSSG Dubai, and leaving the premises. At 2.15 p.m., PMSG Kachirata and PSSG Dubai returned and asked the handcuffed PMSG Mayo to disembark the Green Montero for the third time. At 2.20 p.m., the press again returned and parked in front of the WPD landing. Still on handcuffs, PMSG Mayo was brought out again and boarded the Green SUV Montero. 2.20 p.m. The whites again parked again, in front of the landing establishment, with head of the truck. Also seen PMSG Kachiranta and another individual, carrying a large sized black luggage and placing it in the trunk of the said vehicle. Three individuals was needed to lift the large black luggage, indicating that this luggage must be significantly heavy. 2.20 p.m. The black duffel bag was also seen brought inside the sedan, and was placed at the back passenger seat. 2.21 p.m., PMSG Kachirata then boarded the sedan with another individual, carrying a black duffel bag, and leaving the premises. 2.23 p.m., patrolman Kalao and PMSG Kachirata arrived, using the red motorcycle. 2.29 p.m., police captain Sosanko and an individual seen looking for possible CCTV around the area. At 2.48 p.m., police captain Sosanko, patrolman Dua, and patrolman Kalao was seen talking outside the establishment. At 2.57 p.m., a black SUV arrived and parked in front of the landing establishment. At 3.44 p.m., a black sedan arrived at the front of the landing establishment. At 3.45 p.m., a black SUV arrived at the front of the landing establishment and on board was police colonel Lemon. SOU 4 a chief. 3.54 p.m. A black man arrived on board as police lieutenant Colonel Ibanez, SOUNCR chief, and police major Michael Angelo Salmingo, deputy SOUNCR. 3.56 p.m. Police Colonel Long Long I, police lieutenant Colonel Ibanez and police major Salmingo entered the WPP meeting establishment. At 3.59 p.m., the director PNP Beck, Police Brigadier General Narciso Domingo arrived at the area. At 3.59 p.m., Director PNP Beck, Police Brigadier General Domingo, Police Colonel Long Long I, Police Lieutenant Colonel Ivan Yes, and Police Major Sammy Commander at the WPP landing. 4.29 p.m., Police Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Gonzalez arrived at the area and entered the WPP landing establishment. 6.51 p.m., Police Lieutenant General Benjamin Sungos, DCO, arrived and entered the WPD landing. At 7.16 p.m., Police Major Sammy Go left the premises. At 7.20 p.m., PNP Bank Director of Police Brigadier General Domingo, Police Colonel Long Long and I, Police Lieutenant Colonel Yvonne Yes, Police Lieutenant Gonzalez, and Police Major Sal Mingo were seen talking at the side corner of the WPD establishment. 7.41 p.m., Director of Bank, Police Brigadier General Domingo, left the area. At 7.41 p.m., Police Colonel Olana and Police Major Sal Mingo boarded the Green Montero, where PMSG Mayo was held captive and handcuffed. And now, at 7.45 p.m., PMP Bank operatives were seen removing the handcuffs of PMSG Mayo. As seen in the footage, he was deliberately released and removed in the area, still boarding the SUV.
medyo nako-confuse pa ako ano kasi first time ko po itong pinanood. Ang nadidinig natin ng mga ranggo ay pinakamababa lieutenant colonel tapos pinakamataas police brigadier general. I do not know kung yun po ba ay bahagi ng operasyon o bahagi na ng mga umaareglo. Di natin alam ano so far pero patuloy po nating panoorin ito pong live streaming kanina ni Secretary Benwar Abalos. Seven fifty p.m. The Grey Montero exited the establishment. On board was PMSG Mario. Colonel Gonzalez contested why PMSG Mario was not included in the inventory of the nine hundred ninety kilos. He questioned Police Brigadier General Domingo regarding the report. He replied, "I'm the county chief, PMP." Yet, Colonel Gonzalez later reported the incident to the PDE chief. At 9 p.m. in October 8, 2022, suddenly, PMSG Mayo became an arresting officer for a different case as part of their cover-up. This was noted from the spot report regarding service and warrant of arrest for violation of RA number 9165. In addition, as stated on the submitted after operation report, dated October 13, 2022, PMSG Mayo is one of the recommended personnel to receive awards regarding the said accomplishment. Question, why was PMSG Mayo made an arresting officer, where in fact, he was arrested during the body bust operation earlier? The next day, October 9, 2022, at 2.30 a.m. on October 9, 2022, a hot pursuit operation was conducted. This time, PMSG Mayo was arrested for violation of RA 9165. Along Quezon Bridge, Quezon Boulevard, Piedra Manila, the SWAT report was signed by Police Brigadier General Domingo. Naputol na? Wala na akong dapat iwanan pa dahil ang miscompaign ay magpapakita kung ano talaga yung mga ginawa upang i-cover up. Ito yung ilalaman sa mga hawak namin. Nawala ng kusyo. This is just to collaborate upang sing lamang ang aming mga hawak na testimony at ibang pamangante. So kung sa mga samahin mo yan, napakalakas po yan. At uh, meron nga tayong task force dito at dahil dito, para pangalagaan ng ebidensya at para hindi na makagalaw ka, minumukahin ko na lahat ng mga taong nakita natin sa tape ay mag-leave muna pending investigation itong task force. Okay. So, maliwanag na yung katanungan natin kanina. Lahat ng mga binanggit na pangalan ng mga pulis mula sa ranggong Police Lieutenant Colonel hanggang Police Brigadier General ay nire-request po ni Secretary Benhur Abalos na mag leave of absence muna. Hindi natin alam kung sino-sino talaga sa kanila ang merong kasalanan but so far kung babalikan natin mamaya o siguro after na lang ng live streaming na ito muli kung babalikan yung yung video at ililista ko yung mga pangalan ng pulis. O baka perhaps sa mga susunod na minuto o oras, kapangalanan na rin po iyan ng mga media. Patuloy pa mo muna natin panoorin ito pong video. They will be suspected of the investigation. Sino-sino ito mga tao ito? Ayan na. Nakita nyo sa video, number one, you tell that general Benjamin Santos Jr. Number two. Ano? Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos Jr. O Lieutenant Colonel Benjamin Santos. O, sige, tuloy lang natin mga tol. Ano? General Narciso Domingo. Ang director ng PIDE. Number four. Colonel Julian Oronan. Ang chief ng PIDE SOU 4A. Number five. 
Captain Jonathan Sosonko, ang head ng Aras Team Fidel, SOU 4A. Lieutenant Colonel Arnulfo Ibanez, ang OIC ng Fidel. Ito yung Philippine Guard Enforcement Group, SOU NCR. Number 7, Major Michael Angelo Salmingo, Fidel, SOU NCR. Number 8, Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Gonzalez, Quezon City Police District. Number 9, Lieutenant Asharaf Amarol, ang Intelligence Officer ng PIDEG, Intelligence and Foreign Liaison Division. Number 10, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Lorenzo III, ang Manila PD Morales Station Commander. 11, Captain Randolph Pinon, ang Intelligence Section ng PIDEG, SOU 48. Ito yung mga taong na... Three-star general yung pinakamataas na binangalanan ni Secretary Benhor Abalos, si Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos. Ano? Ito po, siya po iyon. Yung unang-unang pinangalanan ni Secretary Benhor Abalos na nakita po sa video. Ulitin nga natin mga tol. If not, they will be suspended pending investigation. Sino-sino itong mga tao ito? Nakita niyo sa video, number one, Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos Jr. Siya yun mga tol, ano? Ito po yung unang-unang pinangalanan ni Secretary Benhor Abalos, Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos Jr. Taas, three-star general. General Narciso Domingo, ang director ng PIDEG. Number four, Colonel Julian Oronan, ang chief ng PIDEG SOU 4A. Number five, Captain Jonathan Sosonko, ang head ng Aras Team Fidel, SOU 4A. Lieutenant Colonel Arnulfo Ibanez, ang OIC ng Fidel. Ito yung Philippine Guard Enforcement Group, SOU NCR. Number 7, Major Michael Angelo Salmingo, Fidel, SOU NCR. Number 8, Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Gonzalez, Quezon City Police District. Number 9, Lieutenant Asharaf Amarol, ang Intelligence Officer ng PIDEG, Intelligence and Foreign Liaison Division. Number 10, Lieutenant Colonel Harry Lorenzo III, ang Manila PD Morales Station Commander. 11, Captain Randall Pignon, ang Intelligence Section ng PIDEG, SOU 48. Ito yung mga... Ayon dito sa designation ni Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos, siya po pala ang Deputy Chief for Operations. Alam niyo po ba kung ano po ang ibig sabihin nun? Ikatlong pinakamataas na police sa Philippine National Police. Una po, Chief PNP. Pangalawa, Deputy Chief for Administrations. At ikatlo po ang Deputy Chief for Operations. Ito pong si General Benjamin Santos, siya po ang pumalit sa pwesto nitong si dating Lieutenant General o IC ano, Lieutenant General Vicente Danao Jr. Okay? Yan ano? Ano pa bang nakalagay dito? Yun lamang, yung additional informations na nakuha po natin, nakakagulat po ito kasi bagamat pinepresume so far na sila po ay uh, Wala pa rin kasalanan dito pero hindi maipaliwanag yung kanilang presensya noong Oktubre 2022 kung saan nakita nga po prior sa arrest nitong si Mayo ang mga nabanggit na opisyales ng Philippine Drug Enforcement Group or PIDEG. At ang nakalulungkot pa, yung pinakamataas sa kanila doon sa area ay ikatlo sa pinakamataas ang katungkulan sa ating Philippine National Police.
uh, taong nakita nating lahat na nandito sa tape na ito. So, kabuka na sinasabi ko, magiging na lang muna sila pending investigation. If not, they will be suspended pending investigation. Kamukha ng aming pangako sa inyo, dito po sa DILG, sa National Police Commission, hindi kami papayag na masira ang ating bansa nitong droga. Kung kailangan linisin ang rambo, gagawin namin ang sinumpaan namin dito. Lininisin namin ito ang pinapangako ko namin sa inyo po. Na nakikinig na natanood ngayon, mahabang lapan nito, tulungan nyo ang ating gobyerno para ito sa ating anak at sa kinabukasyan ng ating bansa. Ang mahirap sa lahat, habang lumalaban ka sa droga, yung mga tao mismo dapat mag-arresto ng mga pusher ay sila pa nagiging hadlang at sila pa nagiging protektor. Pinukulit ko, walang problema ang walang solusyon. Makamalaki ang problema ng ito, nakakapit, pero ito aming sumungtaan. Ininisip po namin ang rambong ito. Maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Maraming salamat po, Secretary Benjamin Bender Abelos. Uh, we now open the floor for questions. Uh, first call, Mr. Rafi Pima, GMA 7. Hello, sir. Um, bago po nitong press conference, were they informed about uh, itong mga evidence sa hawak nyo at nagpahayag na ba sa inyo ng, uh, uh, nagbigyan ba sila ng pahayag officially, lalo rin sa mga finding na uh, um, report? There is an ongoing, uh, proceedings before the fact-finding board. No, Alas dalawang linggo na po ito. But in the interest of uh, protecting the integrity of the investigation, mas pinabuti namin yan dahil na uh, hindi lamang testimony ang dinis namin, hindi lamang itong tape na ito, kundi may iba pa mga tapes no, na marami. Napakasundoan namin na dapat muna pag-ing pending investigation. Sir, so, dapat po ba sila kayong binigay ng deadline? Kung hindi sila magiging kayo ng mismo ang mag-release sa kanya? Sususpunin namin sila. Hanggang kailan po sila pwede mag-release? This week. This week. This week. Holiday na pala ngayon, ano? Okay. So, official day is tomorrow. This week. Ang hiling lang natin dito mga tol, huwag sana itong matulat sa nakaraang administrasyon kung saan pinangalanan ang limang generals wala namang nakasuhan. Kaya dito masusubok po natin ang leadership nito pong si... Sekretary Benhur Abalos, kung talagang ang mga binanggit po na PNP officials sa pangunguna po ng pinakamataas ang katungkulan sa mga nabanggit na pinangalanan na si Lieutenant General Benjamin Santos Jr. ay kung makakasuhan o kung ano ang mangyayari sa hinarap. Sana hindi po maging... Uh, maging parehas ang pagkakataon sa nakaraan sa kasalukuyan. Nagtitiwala kami kay Sekretary Benhur Abalos at I believe majority po sa inyo nagtitiwala din sa kanya kaya nga 90% ang nakuha niya sa trust approval trust and approval rating noong nakaraang uh, survey na isinagawa para sa hanay ng mga gabinete. Kaya naman yung pagtitiwala na yan sana magresulta po talaga sa isang productive na investigations at hindi lang doon sa pagpapangalan mauuwi kung hindi sa pagkakakaso. Higit sa lahat, sa conviction kung sakaling kakasuhan po nila ito. Yeah. May we call on next, Ms. Camille Samonte of TV5. Sir, clarify ko lang yung sinabi ninyo. So, yung from the 990 kilos of shabu, 44 kilos doon yung nawala. Paano? But it was confirmed. It was confirmed. And uh, then this one finding of the Philippine National Police. If I'm not mistaken, it's 42 kilos na kita sa camp kami at sinuwen yung doon para hindi mas inabandon ng doon. At uh, ito yung ano na ongoing ano at kung di ba nakakalawo ni dalawang police dito na inihisi na. 
Tama ba po? Chair Bernardo, baka gusto mong dagdagan. Thank you, sir. Yung involved dito na nag-surrender ng uh, 42 kilos, si uh, Sergeant Katarata at saka si Sergeant Lebos. Sila yung nakita rin natin dito sa CCTV kanina na nagsisilid ng uh, mga ilang mga luggages, mga uh, uh, black uh, pouches doon sa sasakyan ng civil service. Kaya patunay, base doon sa physical evidence at uh, documentary evidence, nakita sila yung nagsisilid at sila nga itinawagan at uh, sinurenta naman nila. Overall, sir, that's uh, kasama na yun, yung 990 talaga yun. Uh, bahagi siya ng 990. 990. But, uh, hindi lang may titigil doon sa 42. At hindi lang namin gusto mag-elaborate, but uh, it doesn't stop doon sa 42. Ganun pa dapat ka lima tuklasan yan na po. Sir, were you able to find out ano daw yung gagawin nila? Bakit may nalasigilin yung mga yun? Marahe silang uh, pinaliwanag, uh, isa sa sinabi nila, eh, bahagi raw ito ng mga dati nilang kalakalan. Meaning, uh, sir? Merong mga reward doon sa mga informant na sinasabi nila. Gaya ng nabati doon sa mga pagdikit. Parang hindi kaya dahilan na lamang yan, katulad doon sa ibinulgar ni... Director General Berhilio Lasso, Lasso, Maso, ng kalakaran sa Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency kung saan 30% ng huling droga ay mapupunta doon sa informer para po maging kabayaran sa kanyang informations na ibinigay sa ating mga operating elements. We do not know, ano? Tuloy natin. Kapag dikirin at yung puna natin mga investigation. So, balit pa uh, pansamantala, in as much as we are still uh, early on to this uh, top-finding investigation, we will release yung uh, full disclosure of the last video. Well, I just saw two ago that the director of PDA, number four, no, kasi yung una si Mario, pero ang mga si Mario. Number four, number four, Number five is Police Captain Jonathan Sosonko, the head of the arrest team. He takes his time for Philippine Drug Enforcement Group. SOU is Special Operations Unit of 4A. Number six is Lieutenant Colonel Arnulfo Ibanez, OIC of PDEC. SOU National Capital Region. Number seven is Police Major Michael Angelo Salmingo, the Deputy of the PDE, SOU NCR. Number eight is Lieutenant Colonel Glenn Gonzalez, Quezon City Police District, PD. Number nine is Lieutenant Ashraf Amerol, the Intelligence Officer of the Diverse Intelligence and Foreign Liaison Division. Number 10 is Lieutenant Colonel Ari Lorenzo III, Manila PD, Moriola Station Commander. Number 11 is Captain Randolph Pinon, the Intelligence Section of PDEG, SOU 40. Sir, Mas bali isang pulang kasi wala na si Mario. Sir, itong sampung uh, police personnel, sila sir yung uh, most, parang sinasabi niya na most likely nag, nag-try na i-cover up yung arrest ni Mario? Sila yung nasa tape. Nakita niyo naman how it was narrated. Sila nasa tape, yung inconsistencies, etc. No? Uh, kamukha ng sinasabi namin, para lang uh, maging matinam ang pagtakbo uh, ng investigasyon. Mas pinagbuti na pagkasundaan natin sa sila yung mag-believe o hindi sila susunod pending investigation. Anyways, mga tol, nadinig naman natin ano, kung sino-sino po yung mga polis, bagamat hindi ko tanda ang mga pangalan, isa lamang yung hindi ko makakalimutan. Kasi siya po yung pinakamataas ang katungkulan. Diba? Walang iba kung hindi ang TDCO. 
the Deputy Chief for Operations, third in command ng ating Philippine National Police. At nakalulungkot po ito dahil nadadrag ngayon yung pangalan ng buong kapulisan at hindi lang simpleng polis ang na-involve kung hindi napakaraming matataas na opisyales. Pinakamababang ranggo na nadinig po natin ay police captain. Still, binibigyan naman po sila ng pagkakataong i-air ang kanilang uh, panig. Higit sa lahat, depensa ng kanilang sarili. Pero sa ngayon, hinihimok ni Secretary Benhur Abalos na sila po ay magkusang mag of absence. Otherwise, isususpindi po sila ni Secretary Benhur Abalos. Ang pagsuspindi po na yan, maximum of 90 days. Yung tinatawag po na preventive suspension. Parang yung nangyari kay director, dating Director General Gerald Bantag, kung saan siya po ay preventively suspended pending investigations doon po sa pagpatay kay Villamor at saka kay Lapid. Ito naman, pending investigations, kaya preventively suspended po sila kung hindi po sila pansamantalang maglilib of absence sa Philippine National Police. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo mga tol. Nakalulungkot po ang balita na ito. Yet, Pasalamatan po natin si Secretary Benhur Abalos. Itinataya niya ngayon ang kanyang karangalan, ang kanyang kaligtasan, ang buhay, pati ng kanyang pamilya. Hindi po ito ordinaryong laban. Alam niyo naman po sa likod ng illegal na droga, ang napakaraming mga galamay, napakaraming mga kasabwat at napakadelikado po niyan sa isang lumalaban dito. We are just hoping na ang pagpapangalan po nitong si Sekretary Benhur Abalos dito sa mga nabanggit na opisyales ng Philippine National Police ay hindi po matapos sa press conference lamang. Mag-aantay po tayo sa kaukulang kaso at titingnan po natin ito kung ito ay gugulong at aakit sa korte higit sa lahat kung ito po ay magkakaroon ng conviction. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo mga tol. Bago po tayo pansamantalang maghiwahiwalay, magbalik muna ako sa inyong mga komento. Shoutout muna sa lahat po ng ating mga manonood, 